In this segment, we're going to talk about hidden Markov models. We're just going to set up the basic definitions and see how this model is defined, what its parameters are, and what it can do. So hidden Markov models are a generative sequence model that is going to allow us to uh, represent uh, tasks like, uh, well, particularly tagging tasks like part of speech tagging um, in a nice uh, kind of modeling framework. So uh, first we have, uh, so we, we, have, we have basically two types of objects here. Um, we have uh, tags yi, which we're going to say are in this, uh, this tag set. And we have words uh, xi, which are in a vocabulary. All right. So the definition of a hidden Markov model is the following. Well, this is this is kind of one way. Well, this is there. There are, there are a couple of slight things that that might differ between definitions, but uh, this is basically the the kind of standard form of these. Okay, so what's going on here? So let's look at this graphically uh, using uh, BayesNet notation. So we start off by sampling a tag y1. And then based on that tag, uh, we sample a word, x1. So when we decompose the probability in this particular way, um, one, what, one kind of term that's used for this is the generative story of the model. And so the generative story of this model is saying that, all right, we have some distribution over tags that can start a sentence, y1. And then conditioned on that tag, we generate a word, which is going to be the first word of the sentence. And then uh, we generate a second tag, y2. And then uh, the second word, x2, conditioned only on that tag, y2. Um, and then we kind of continue until we have yn, which gives xn, and then stop. OK, so this is a, this is a model that makes uh, certain independence assumptions. And essentially, the reason it's called a hidden Markov model um, is because the y's form a Markov process. Um, meaning uh, yi depends, uh, or I'll say this formally, is conditionally independent of y1 through yi minus 2 given yi minus 1. So it's not right to say that it's completely independent of the, uh, the kind of earlier states in the process, because the earlier states in the process influence what uh, yi minus 1 is. But if we know what yi minus 1 is, then uh, kind of that fully determines the distribution over yi. And so the kind of idea here is that the part of speech tags themselves are giving us this sort of syntactic skeleton of a sentence, right? Like, okay, you're going to have a, maybe if you have a determiner, and then you're going to have a noun, and then maybe there's some chance of having a verb after that, right? And then after a verb, it doesn't matter that there was a noun before that, you know, we're probably going to have uh, a noun afterwards, or maybe a preposition, um, and then after a preposition, okay, now we're going to get the object of that preposition, uh, et cetera. And then the other assumption here is that the words are kind of conditionally independent of each other given the tags. So x2 doesn't depend on x1, um, but instead is only going to depend on y2. So this is not necessarily a good assumption, because 
if we have x1 and x2 as, uh, for example, New York, the fact that we have you know, a kind of proper noun phrase, or maybe San Francisco is a slightly better example. You know, given that we see San, there's only you know, not that many words in English that are going to come after that. And, uh, but, but right now, we're just saying, OK, we have, a, we have a proper noun and then a proper noun. And you know, San Francisco, you know, that's possibil That's a possibility. Um, but San York or New Francisco, these are also possibilities. So these are assumptions that the model is making. Um, and the reason you make these kinds of assumptions in generative models is for uh, is for tractability, basically, um, so that you're not having to deal with um, you know conditioning and thinking about a whole bunch of different variables at the same time. Okay. So what we also want to think about are the parameters of this model. So we have p of y1, which is called the initial distribution. And so I'm just going to draw that like this. Uh, we're going to call that this s. And this is a uh, this is a t length vector. So it's going to it is a probability distribution. So unlike a lot of the other models we've seen, like bag of words models, where the parameters can be any real valued uh, or any real number, here the parameters have to be uh, real numbers between 0 and 1 that sum to 1 here, right? because they're probabilities. And this is a distribution over what the possible starting tags are. So then we have uh, these yi given yi minus 1 terms. Uh, these, this is, these are called transitions. And so the way that's going to be represented is by t. Um, so we're going to use the kind of square t here for the transition matrix, um, and the you know tau or squiggly t for the uh, the set of tags. And we could think of that uh, as a t by t uh, matrix here, where uh, essentially the value of a particular cell is telling us. Uh, what is the probability of why I give it of, uh, the, let's say, tag? Uh, well, actually, let me change this a little bit. Um, I'm going to write uh, y cur and y next. Um, so it's going to tell us what is the probability of the y next tag given the y cur tag. And so these transitions are independent of the positions in the sentence, so that there's there's no dependence on i or anything there. It is just a matrix of these probabilities defined over um, every pair of tags. All right, and then we have these p x i given y i terms, and these are called emissions. And the parameters here, I'm going to draw a long kind of long matrix here. Uh, We'll call it y cur and x cur. Uh, and we're going to call this thing e. And it is going to be t by v. Uh, again, a matrix. And again, uh, it's, it's just encoding the probability of given tag, say, nn. Um, you know, I'll, I'll draw kind of a slice here. It says, OK, given tag nn. What is the probability of seeing each word in the vocabulary? And so we do make an assumption that there is a fixed vocabulary here. We're placing a distribution over words in that vocabulary. Uh, and so given tag nn, we need each word to have some probability, and those probabilities need to sum to 1. OK, so uh, there's two steps that we need to take in order to use this model. Um, the first is parameter estimation. Um, 
you know, given data, how do we get values for these parameters? And the second is inference. Um, so given this model, uh, how do we actually use it to part of speech tag a sentence? And so these are the two topics that we're going to talk about next, and that's the end of the segment.